Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Test and Tune or 0 to 60 or wherever I end up uploading this. Um, I've just finished yesterday's video on the snap-on charger, which is working great. Well, it's working like an old school snap-on charger. It pumps out some volts and it pumps out some amps, but that is what it's supposed to do, so fair enough. Um, however, after seeing me being successful with a snap-on charger, Dan from Simply Tuning has lent me his Schumacher INC100 to see if I can get this one working for him because these are these are like a thousand bucks and he needs it he needs one replaced so if I can't get this going he's asked me to build him one of the uh, server power supplies anyway let me show you what it's doing and we'll see if we can work out how to fix it so I'm just gonna plug it in now the reason I want to film this nice and easy to do one-handed it makes some noise So it's making like a hissing noise, which isn't great. Um, I'll show you how it sort of works. So it's actually, sorry, I'm gonna wiggle this. I'll disconnect that. Then we'll plug the batteries in. Okay, so it comes up connected. It can see that there's 14.1 volts at the car, which that doesn't sound right. So something is off there. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna set to automatic charging at, we'll go 20 amps and go. So it clicks on, it's showing 14.3 volts, but we know it's not 14.3 at the car. And I'll just put this on, which is measuring the amps going through it. And there is one amp going through. In fact, if we turn it off, that one amp drops, turn it on, we can get one amp going through. Actually, even if we put it up to, when it wants to let me do it, if we put it up to 70, oh, 70 amps, we'll go. Volts go up a little bit, one amp. So basically it's just not outputting any current um, and the voltage is off. So let's pull it apart, see if we can work out what's going on inside and if it's something that we can fix. Turn it off. Be a nice power supply if it worked. Okay, so we have the board out. To get it out, it was just a matter of unclipping all of these little clippy thing. Somebody's had this out before. Uh, it does actually sit under this ledge here. And I feel like the way that Schumacher designed it is you undo all the screws on the bottom. Uh, however, these just spin uh, and then slide the whole circuit board out that way. There was one earth point screw just there and then it come out. Now, I can't really see any other issues. There's a little bit of discoloration on the circuit board here, which might imply corrosion maybe, like it might've gotten wet but I don't, I don't know. You do need to be super careful touching this. These big old capacitors, which I think is what the problem is, um, will store a fair bit of power. Uh, you can just see there, that capacitor on the left, the top of it is bubbled up. I'll try and get a photo with a normal lens instead of a wide angle. But yeah, I think this one is the faulty one. Um, I don't have an actual multimeter to properly test this, unfortunately. Uh, I've only got a standard resistance sort of multimeter. Well, it's the next day and things didn't go to plan. In that clip, you can see I was starting to suspect the capacitor was playing up. Um, I'd forgotten at that point in time that you can't test a capacitor whilst it's still in circuit. Um, I eventually remembered about 20 minutes later, pulled the capacitors out. Well, I removed three of the capacitors um, and tested them the best I could with my standard multimeter. And just, I was just sort of viewing how they reacted to the resistance test. Um, they all really reacted the same, uh, but I was still suspect that maybe that that bulge capacitor was causing the problem. I ended up running the unit, um, just testing without that capacitor in there in case it was shorting out internally or doing something weird, causing it to go into some sort of fail safe mode. Uh, and, and the charger reacted no different. So with that capacitor not in circuit, it did exactly the same thing that did at the start of this video. And I'm thinking, well, maybe it is the capacitor. I then found a higher voltage and a lower capacitance capacitor which came out of another battery charger, that I sold it in place to try. Um, I was figuring if we can at least get it charging at four amps, we'll know if I should go and spend the $25 on a new capacitor that's in there. And yeah, this made no difference as well. I spent, I don't know, probably six hours reading online, trying to work out what it could be that's causing this problem, and I cannot work it out. So I'm gonna end this video off with a question. Hopefully someone can help me out here and hopefully other people with the same problem will also be able to help. I can't fix this charger. Uh, I cannot find anything that's wrong with it. Just to, just to recap, it thinks the, the car's battery is at a much higher voltage than it is. Testing it with a multimeter at the terminals here, uh, the battery charger will think there's like 14.4 volts when there's actually only 12.6 volts here. So it's almost like the charger's going 
there's already way too much current or we're already over voltage. Don't worry about putting any output out. If somebody knows what that could be or things to check, let me know. I'm going to keep this here for the time being. And if anyone's got any ideas, please let me know. I'd love to have a bit of a conversation in the comment section. Till then, thank you. Sorry, this isn't actually a how to fix. This is more of a help me fix video. Guys, thank you very much for watching Test and Tune. We'll catch you on the next one.